It's J Mo, the very best reviews. Tell them nothing can test the ghost. What's good, everybody? Welcome to the show. Appreciate everybody for coming through. We about to talk about the shy episode Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? Season 6, episode 16. The end of Duda is what it really was. Damn. I ain't see it coming. I mean, we all knew somebody was coming for him. He got the most enemies ever. But who saw it coming and going like that? I wasn't expecting that. And now Nuck talking about he the new boss report to me and what he got going on. I mean, they didn't woo change the game up, man. I'ma miss old dude I day. All oh, the dude I day is over with. Straight up. Then took the man out. Uh a lot happened this episode. Rob Bass. Then got, you know what I'm saying, aired out. His big ass tried to walk away. He was such an easy target. I guess they took him off the show. He was talking too much about his his uh, Tiana Taylor or whatever. I guess he, I guess she do make more money than him now that he off the show. <laughs> uh, damn, man. Tiff about to be destroyed. And she was just talking about... How she was happy for Keisha and she got a good man and everything going good for her. And now she about to be hurt. How many of y'all think Tiff ain't going to be jealous and hurt? You know what I'm saying? That now that Emmett and Keisha going to be all happy and smiling. You know what I'm saying? About to have a new baby. You think Rob mom is going to be there with Tiff? She probably be like, this happened because he was with your ghetto ass. Get out of my house. She probably throw Tiff out on the street next episode. Probably blame Tiff for what happened. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, damn. Damn shame, man. Tiff in trouble. We see that Nina really going to leave with the brat on the road. And the brat was pressing hard. Pressing hard. I mean, like, what? She was pressing real hard, and Nina then left and bounced. All it took was old Vic, Vic Mensa to be like, I take I look out for her. Can we trust you? Yep, I'm a changed man. Good enough for me. Deuces. <laughs> really? Damn. Anyway, dude, I dead. Ain't no care for Thanksgiving. I guess uh, he said, I'm done. I'm out this show. And, uh, damn, it's kind of messed up. Kev ain't come back. Nobody heard from him. He didn't dump Maisha. He like, Maisha, I'm out in L.A., okay? That's Chicago style, <laughs> West Side Story. I'm in L.A., okay? I'm getting that L.A. tail. You know what I mean? Everybody out here is Slim Thugger. You know what I mean? I ain't uh you know riding riding that no more. <laughs> Woo! We see what else. Uh, what y'all think about Keisha and uh, when she was talking about the pregnancy and Emmett and uh, you know she was what gonna decide probably for a moment not to keep Emmett's baby, but you decided to keep old boy's baby when you thought it was old boy's baby. Like, come on, Keisha, boy. Keisha be putting some stuff. I mean, if I was him and she'd have been putting me through the ringer, man. And she gave him an emotional roller coaster like it ain't no joke. So, you know, we'll see. And then another thing when Keisha was talking about uh, the baby. And he talking about we're going to do a gender reveal. She like, gender is in the mind. We ain't going to do that. We're going to let the baby choose. And it's like, I'm old school. I don't know about y'all, but I'm old school. And I think maybe your sexuality or your preference may be in the mind. But I do believe your body parts are your body parts. I mean, I don't see what's the problem with that. And if people start saying they was in the wrong body parts and stuff, I don't know. I can't say this and that. 
I, that's a different subject. I don't know. I can't say what's it that goes to the mind again, I believe. So I don't know. Maybe people may feel that way in the mind. I don't know. But I still think maybe them body parts are there. Maybe you did get the wrong ones, but they're still there. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> you know, we'll see. What up, Queen Beauty L, my girl? What's up with you? How you feeling? Rashonda, what's good, sis? First in the building. Thunder God, rest in heaven, Rob. I know, right? Tonette, what's good, sis? How you doing? I hope your weekend was good. I know a lot of people want to talk about power right now. I mean, it was a toss-up. I did the video about power last night. First reaction, I didn't get to do the shy yet. I mean, I guess I could have waited on the shy, but... You know, try to try to balance it out. D.L. Hughley in town. I was going to go to see D.L. Hughley, but I'm going to go tomorrow night. So we'll see what's up with D.L. Hughley. I was thinking about putting together a little comedy show uh, and putting it straight on YouTube live. What y'all think about that? Would y'all like to see some of my comedy on YouTube live? Let me know in the comments. Um, but, uh, definitely was thinking about it. What's good, LaCream? How you feeling, my brother? Thunder God, you say, didn't, uh, Nuck just have Thanksgiving dinner at Rob's? Then he murk him only to shy. I know. Uh, no, that's not even the worst part. How did Rob's mom get there? I could have swore she was just there chilling. Next thing you know, she dipped there with the piece on Duda. Like, I don't know how that happened. Nuck turned evil. He didn't beat the nice out of Nuck last episode. Now Nuck just evil. You know what I'm saying? I'm the new Duda. I seen what it takes. And it ain't that simple as in most operations that I know of. You can't just be like, okay, I'm the new spot. Y'all report to me. I mean, do you know the connects and all of that stuff? Unless all they doing is some chop shop stuff, which I don't think so. 305 Mr. City. This episode actually was pretty good. It had a lot of different stuff going on. I'm not saying good like everything made sense. Just good as in it had a lot of stuff that was entertaining. It was entertaining. And 305, I agree with you. That dinner scene with Jake and Papa in the past that was hilarious. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, we had, uh, Saw them talking at the dinner table, and uh, Jake was kind of throwing shot at the uh, pastor wife, talking about, she disrespect me first. Hey, he was like, don't be disrespecting my wife. She disrespect me first. Hey, we'd have had to get, I would have had Jake up out my house. Jake would have got put up out my house with that uh, tough talk, talking about, I be seeing you on TV begging. Hey, young man. I don't know what this is, but this ain't that. I'm going to have to let talk to you another time. You're going to have to leave. Uh, he over here insulting my house guests. You know, who the hell are you? Bumpy Johnson. I'd have been like, man, you the one big and trying to hock your little, you know, half price clothing. Dollar Tree. Don't be coming up here hating. You know. <laughs> So, anyway, this episode, my mom watched it. She she uh, <laughs> she uh said she was interested in uh, maybe chiming in on uh, what happened. So, we'll see. Um, let's see. The Hot Spot Network. What's up? You say, what up, Jay? Do the name sound like when the RZA impersonated ODB. <laughs> my name is the Duad. <laughs> yeah, you want to see the comedy? Okay, Tanette, I appreciate it. You want to see it? Y'all would like to see it? All right. Maybe we'll put the little comedy show straight on and we'll see how it go. If nobody watch it, then, hey, I guess I got, you know, nothing to lose. And if people watch it, then, hey, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, back to this episode, though. We saw that, uh, you know, Papa... He over here preaching at the church now. And uh, I I don't like Papa what he becoming. 
I don't like what he's talking about. We need to give abundantly. Hey, man, shut up. And they over there got the Apple Pay and all that to us. I guess maybe churches have that nowadays. I mean, that would be kidding with the modern times. Everybody don't got a dollar bill on them to throw in there. But, uh, you know, he he's starting to, I think, take on the wrong impersonation, impression of that pastor. And we saw Dre from Power. He knows how to get into some mess. We see that he uh, came back. He used to be the protege before Papa. He talking about, I knows where the bodies are buried. They stay buried that way as long as, uh, you know, you put me back on. So I wonder where the show going to go with Dre, now a part of the the, the shy universe, uh, Ro Timmy. <laughs> uh, I was surprised to see him up in there. What up, 305, Mr. City? You say I laugh when Jake told fake Joe Osteen, I ain't your son. And Jimmy told First Lady, I know you ain't talking. That's what I'm saying. They got put out real quick, you know. And uh, <laughs> they like, look here, son. I ain't your son. Oh, I know you ain't talking. Why are they sitting at the dinner table with them kids anyway? Like, Papa was invited. What, because they gave him a ride? They can just walk on up in there? So that's another thing. I was surprised that they were at the table. And when Papa was having Thanksgiving with Vic and his people, why Papa Mother didn't go with him? So Jake and Gemma can go to the pastor's house, but she can't? She should have been like, okay, we going to go there. Okay, let me go with you. And she over here talking about he the wrong influence, this and that. Shoot, she should have went with him. Anyway. <laughs> Say Dre knows still on swole. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to get in trouble, man. You know. He know how to get in get out of a jam. Ain't that what uh Emmett's Pop said uh to his brother? Pop said you be getting into some mess. But he also say you know how to get out of it, too. He's like, oh, he said that? If you need some help, let me know, brother. He's like, all right, same for you. Meanwhile, he robbing him behind the back. Like, that was his chance to come out and fully explain to him what's going on. But he ain't say nothing. And... <laughs> That's going to end up being a, a problem coming down the, round, the long, uh, you know, long haul. Speaking of, uh, you know, what's up with them trying to fry that turkey? <laughs> that was kind of funny. They always known to put a little kind of funny, lighthearted scene in the shy in, in some of these episodes, and I like that little turkey scene where they was trying to fry, even though I thought the brother was kind of corny and overdoing it with the fire extinguisher, uh, ready to, uh, you know, blast at a moment's notice. Um, what's up with the preacher's daughter and Zay? Kenya, she like, you uh, kill people? You the police? You got a gun? Let me see it. Ooh. She rubbed all on that gun. So she, like they say, the, the good girls, the preacher's daughters, be the sometimes the freakiest and worst ones. So now she about to get mixed in deep with Zay. Yeah, Papa might have did the right thing by leaving her alone. She She is on another level. Papa ain't on that level yet. He, 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 hopefully he ain't ready to be on that level of taking people out. You know, we see, uh, he, when Zay was working, when Zay was with her, he was, uh, talking about, man, you know, do I? Then you always on the clock, even on Thanksgiving. I'm like, damn. But, uh, I mean, that's why, you know, I wonder what do I be having them doing though. Yeah. They ain't really show other than them stealing cars. They don't show them moving work or nothing like on power. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
unless they what dropping it off to corner boys or something. But again, we ain't never seen none of that, so I don't know. You know, uh, Tonette, you say Papa's father ended up being right about Kenya. It's starting to see seem that way, huh? It's starting to seem that way. You say Papa going to get fired and Dre <laughs> Charles is going to get his old job back. Ooh, you know what? That's probably what's going to happen because now that he didn't worked his way in, all he got to do is tell the preacher, get with it, little fat boy. Give me my spot back or maybe some bodies may become unburied. And if that's the case, he going to... Uh, end up giving up a lot of stuff and changing a lot. So, I don't know. You know, maybe Papa will start his own church. That's what Dre tried to do. I guess he didn't know how to do it too well. That's why he was back. He said it's a little more difficult than I thought. <laughs> so, I don't know. Zeke say only my friends call me Pastor. Pastor Cavassier, as a matter of fact. Tired of hearing this. <laughs> Uh, let's see. 305, you say that gun turned on. I know, right? She was ready to get that little gun, that blast on. Good girl gone bad. Damn shame. Anyway, what y'all think about uh, Tiff and everybody at Thanksgiving? It seemed like that was going to be a nice little moment. They show, like, uh, this episode, I give the little cinematography a little credit on this one because they show like every group have their little Thanksgiving dinner from Tiff and Rob and all of them. And then it was uh, Vic and his people. We got to see the pastor and uh, his people. Who else has some Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> so, you know, Tiff mom came in there. We see the Tiff mom pretty hood, and Rob mom is like upscale, you know. So uh, she talking about with a with a hot link, <laughs> and uh, what's up with uh, Emmett brother brought a a bowl of, of chitlins. They like ugh. All right, enough of all the little small talk. <laughs> Back to the main event. Duda is gone. Duda is dead, y'all. How y'all feel about that? I'm kind of salty. I'd rather... I, I mean, this show ain't going to be the same without him. This dude, Curtis Cook, turned in a hell of a performance as the character of Duda. I give him his credit, his props. And the show ain't going to be the same without him on the show. And... To have Nuck is the big bad, I don't know. And to be honest, they should have did this in my opinion. I don't know. Who the hell am I? That's what I always say, really. Who am I, right? I do need to probably start to make a TV show or something, see what happened. But what I would have done when Nuck came in is uh, he should have probably took the kid and walked out. I thought he was going to take his son the way he was holding him. And the way Keisha and Emmett was sitting there, if he'd have been like, all right, y'all, I'm out. And just took him and walked out. And he'd be like, you know, hey, don't don't say nothing. Don't call the police or this, that, and the other. I thought he was going to do that. But he didn't. I guess he figured they might have called the police and that would have been kidnapping. And then it would have been a bigger problem. But the way he's all over the son that he just found out, I guess Nuck doesn't have any kids. That's the only child he has or know about. I don't remember them saying if he have any kids or anything. But Nuck taking out Rob and Duda back to back in the same day. He a pretty much a serial killer. Got my water back, my my Wakanda juice. Now, I think Nuck probably took out the most people. Well, let's say this season he took out the most people. How many people Nuck took out? Three. 
took out Pastor Stanley. He didn't took out Duda. And he didn't took out Rob. That's a three piece in a biscuit. Extra crispy. I'm sure he didn't took out some other people, so nut he didn't turn into a serial killer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Queen B, I was surprised too. I was shocked. And when he popped Duda and it splattered on Lynn like that, I was like, oh, snap. But you know what I don't ever understand in TV shows and movies? Why do people say the damnedest things and then walk away or let somebody walk away? You know what? I'm going to hunt you down for the rest of my days. Okay. Well, I see you then. And leave. But they got a gun on the person and the person's standing there defenseless. Well, you should just shoot them. Why leave somebody around that's going to hunt you for the rest of their days? That wouldn't make sense. You know, same thing as when he popped Duda and she talking about, I'm going to be your worst nightmare. Why he ain't just pop her right then and there? Or why didn't she pop him? She already had, you know what I'm saying, the peace out. All she had to do was pop him. She was already prepared to pop Duda. So why leave somebody around that could be potentially a thorn in your side when you on that type of life? If she did that, then Rob would still be here. But she didn't. She tells him she going to do all this and then she going to be his worst nightmare, then lets him leave. So, of course, well, I mean, it'd be smart to take out her son because once they get back to talking and she tell him what he did, he could become a problem. And he could tell at the moment when he was talking that Rob didn't know nothing. Man, I'm paying you. I ain't paying you no more, man. Da, 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 da. I'm walking off, man. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Take that with you. You could take that to the bank. Deposit that lead. <laughs> Extravagant TBAS. You say this season came around full circle. Bakari said in the first episode of part two, first episode of part two, that if you kill Duda, you become Duda. Nook is the new Duda. Ah, I remember him saying that. I remember him saying that. Even though, of course, this is all TV. Because, of course, you can't just do that. But I get it. And that was a good point of foreshadowing. Um, and I didn't. And that's the thing I will give the shy credit for. Is that they did make him have so many enemies. It was kind of hard to say who may come for him. I mean, the way he did just beat Nuck. I guess he couldn't take that laying down. And that's part of, that is very real, actually. And part of the problem of society today is that a lot of dudes can't take that beat down. Either they scared of it, or if they do get beat with them hands, they're going to come back with the, you know what I'm saying, pistola. So, him taking that L by old man with them hands, and then coming back and popping him, that's very realistic, actually. I can see his pride being hurt and, you know, feeling like, you know, I'm going to take this dude out, man. Instead of giving him the respect back in my day, which I can't believe I just said that. If you got beat, you didn't come back and air him out. You, you may do other things. You may come back and beat him. Some people may come back and air them out back in that day. It may have started in my day, actually, in the mid-90s, late-90s. That's probably when it started. But, you know, hey, it's unfortunate. Because <laughs> you can live and get them back another day or fight another day. But once you do that, mm. sober, Malik the King, no wonder why Shumpty Wanted money from Tiana Taylor in real life. He got killed off as his divorce was going on. Yeah, I kind of mentioned that a little earlier, but that is funny. He was saying that she make, what, three times as much 
as him, uh, which now I guess he done spent his NBA money and now he off the show. I don't know how many roles it is for a six seven dude, but with a Billy Goat Griff uh, beard. <laughs> but nah, all jokes aside, hey, uh, I don't know. People say the damnedest things when they're going through relationships, so I don't really like to comment too deep on stuff like that unless it's a joke or unless it's just something just in the mainstream so much, but um, him getting killed off the show definitely didn't help. I know that much. Everybody like to stay on and get them checks as long as possible, you know? So, hey, knowledge. You say, I think Duda almost killing his baby set him off more than getting packed out. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean... And that's another thing we saw in the beginning of this episode or where when we saw everybody in their Thanksgiving dinners, we saw that Duda was by himself along with his pistola. And it looked like he was ready to take his own self out anyway. So, you know, we you could think sometimes you want to take yourself out. But then, hey. When it come down to it, you, you don't. And at least for most people. And uh, he he probably felt like it, but he didn't. And then when he got Ronnie'd, because it seemed like everybody in the shot gets Ronnie'd. Damn near popped in the back or in the back of the head. He got Ronnie'd. Keisha. Anyway, I'm sure his last thought was, no, <laughs> not yet. Knowledge, you say. I think Duda almost. Oh, I said that already. Motown, he killed him over almost losing baby Ronnie. Mm. Wait a minute. What you mean almost losing baby Ronnie? How he almost lose baby Ronnie? I miss that. How Nuck almost lose baby Ronnie? Y'all gotta refresh my memory. I'm getting old, y'all. Told Nat, you say that was the best part of the show, watching Duda give Nuck the old school beat down. I know, right? That was nice to see him square up, even though Nuck should have charged him and tried to wrestle or pick him up or something after he saw he wasn't about to beat him with them hands. <laughs> but, hey, he took it like a man, at least. At least we thought. Knowledge, you say Rob went out like a sucker. His uncle and dad got deleted and he did nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a big goof. He didn't really do nothing. As big as he was, he could have been the duda. He could have been mobbing everybody, cleaning the flow up with these dudes. He ain't really do nothing or contribute nothing other than being a rich you know, rich kid and having Tiff. That's about it. He ain't really, and I'm. She about to be devastated, Tiff. Woo! And I bet you, Mom Duke's gonna put Tiff out if he wasn't messing with your ghetto ass. This wouldn't have happened. Knowledge, you say? Where was Candy and her goop ass boy bodyguard? <laughs> And she didn't hear nothing coming. What you talking about? She didn't know it was a problem. She hear no evil. See no evil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talk about some. Like, man, if you don't stop shooting at the wind, what the hell wrong with you? <laughs> they should have had her protecting Rob. <laughs> Candy. What Candy need a bodyguard? She the one that ain't got nobody trying to do nothing to her. But got a bodyguard with a gun. Ain't nobody think about Candy on this show or messing with her. But she is the wife. So she going to be all right. She going to get all that life insurance money from Duda. Her and her little goop ass bodyguard about to be on a bus. I mean, a, a boat, a yacht. It's straight up. In San Denis. <laughs> Extravagant TBAS, you said the car explosion almost killed him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But we never saw Nuck know about that. And you know what? 
That's why I forgot about it. I meant to say that. They barely talked about that car explosion here. So the car just blew up? You safe? You all right? Okay. Really? That was it? This, I mean, would it have been on the news? Maybe. It's a lot that happened in Chicago. So I'm not going to say bet the car. Thank y'all, Motown and Extravagant. I love y'all, man. Y'all be, everybody watching, y'all be on the money when y'all be helping out with the, with the live, me trying to remember certain things. But here's my thought on that. It may not have been on the news, okay? A lot happens in Chicago. Everything don't make the news. Even car explosions, believe it or not. So, it's a possibility it did not make the news. I think I would say it's at least a 50-50 chance, though. It would have probably made the news. Um, It would have been some type of investigation if it was an explosion like that. That was a new car. I don't know, man. It was kind of downplayed like it barely happened. I forgot it happened, as y'all see. Um, (laughs) And that was the end of the last episode. So, I don't know. I think they downplayed it. I didn't see nobody tell Nuck about it. And Keisha and uh, Emmett tried to downplay it. But then who put the bomb there? And now that Nuck is number two, I mean, number one. Only person that probably put it there was Zay, which also, I'm glad y'all brought that up again about the bomb stuff. Well, we don't know if it was a bomb. So let me take that back. It might not have been the car thing. It it was an explosion. So it could have been they put a rag in a gas tank or something. I don't know. But whatever it was... Because I was about to say, how does Zay know about explosives? And that's where I was about to go with the police investigation. But then again, there's a lot of ways to make a car burn or, or you know, blow up. You ain't got to use some TNT. So I'll take that back. <laughs> I was thinking too much technical uh, TV movies and stuff. But in reality, it's other ways. So I don't know. We'll see. I bet you if you really want to find out, though, now he's going to know who did it. And then, whoo, look like he on the spree. Anyway, um, knowledge. We ain't see Brittany this episode. We saw Brittany the, on Thanksgiving. Uh, Nay said, had Brittany come to the house, didn't she? And they talked. And uh, he say, I, Bakari say, I forgive, but I won't forget. You know, so uh, ain't Brittany uh, Bakari's sister, right? It is a lot of loose ends on the show. It's a lot of storylines, which is probably why I think they're going to probably wrap Nina up. Let her ride off with the brat. And uh, what? Winnebago? <laughs> That whole plan sounds corny. Anyway. It was something I was thinking like. Who going to pay your bills? <laughs> if your house is paid for, okay, well, who going to pay the electricity and the gas bill? I guess it don't take that much to pay it as far as. If you give somebody the money or if they had the money, they can pay it. I don't know, man. I just couldn't leave my house like that. Just uh, with Tina. I I don't know. We'll see (laughs) how this lasts. But I guess she may be done with the show. She was in a movie uh, recently that uh, looked pretty good that I want to see. So who knows? Maybe she doing more of that. Knowledge, you say who killed Pastor Stanley? That was Nuck. Nuck killed Pastor Stanley because he took the mask off at the end or whatever. That's why I was saying he a little serial killer. He didn't took out three or four people now. You know, you say uh, knowledge. Ask what happened to Zay and Jake, giving him money. 
Now that's a storyline that didn't make sense and ain't went nowhere yet. Maybe we'll see. But Zay giving Jake what five or ten grand? Wow. I don't know what that was about or where that came from. We'll see. Ain't no Zay had it like that. And I don't know what he gonna get from Jake. Um, But so far, they ain't expanded on that storyline just yet. So we'll see. (laughs) But that's something that doesn't actually, at least in my experience, I guess I'm getting up there now, but ain't nobody come around that's, that's relatively close in his age like that dropping money like that to invest. It's t- it's hard to get money out of brothers and sisters. <laughs> you know, and the younger you are, the harder it is to get money. Shoot, it's hard to get a dollar on Super Chat. So to get somebody putting money and doing that, I don't know. I just like, wait a minute. That was a lot. That seemed like a lot. So anyway, <laughs> let's see. What's up, Neek? Neek, how you doing? extravagant TBAS, you say, I think Zay will cash that favor in soon. Yeah, well, he better hurry up and do something. Maybe uh, what he'll do is, well, well, no, she don't know that. What I was going to say is, what he could do is, and the favor he's talking about, if I'm remembering correctly, is he had that meeting with Lynn Whitfield, Rob's mom. So if he lets her know that Nuck is the one that took out your son, and if he takes him out for him or get him set up, then that'll definitely help her out and him out, you know, in that favor department. And then this gets complicated because if you take out Nuck, you just took out Keisha Baby Daddy, which then you didn't mess with their life. Emmett probably be happy. Keisha be acting all silly and crying and stuff. <laughs> so, who knows? Swipe Lee. What up, Swipe Lee? You say no Kadeem Hardis in this episode to pull Bakari back. Yeah. You know, that's another thing I enjoyed this episode. Uh, is that when they did take out Duda, they showed like Bakari see it on the news and then Emmett and everybody see it on the news and everybody like get a chance to see it on the news and when Bakari saw it on the news it looked like he felt like he was free or something when when that happened which you know that was good for him <laughs> feel bad that uh he been tied in with Duda so long and pretty much been trapped so now that he free we'll see what he does now he can finish his book he can write whatever he want to write. And, hey, who knows? He may be the next John Singleton. Juan, Juan Wingleton. Tonette, in my opinion, Bakari chose Nuck because Nale, uh, would tell wouldn't tell him who told her about Brittany working for Duda. That was not loyalty from his perspective. Ah, good one, good one. Okay, I like that. I didn't even get to think about it like that just yet. But uh, so what she referring to is at the end of the episode when Nuck came and he was like, you could trust me. And and look what he got him doing, <laughs> moving dead bodies. But, uh, you know, she wanted him to stay, which, of course, he going to end up regretting. But. He should have stayed, but she did. She wasn't full, fully loyal to him, and so yeah, that poor, poor young man is in the world of trouble, boy. Motown, it is a lot of open storylines going on in the shy. You ain't lying about that. <laughs> uh, you know, hey, Swipe Lee, this is something I thought of as soon as he did it, but. This the shy, who knows? But Swipe Lee says in the comments, can't they use DNA from Bakari's vomit at the scene? I have seen some shows where vomit and things like that, if they are able, believe it or not, 
they have been able to match stuff up with a person through things like that. Um, so, I mean, I don't remember all the details. And, of course, I don't do that. I'm not a, you know, DNA expert. I have stayed at the Holiday Inn and Express, though. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? But they do. They It's possible. Let's put it that way. It is possible. Uh, I, do they need to get his DNA first to match it with that? I think that's something that's possible as well. I don't think they can, unless they already have him on file, I think they would still need to get him and then match it. But, you know, it ain't going to be that hard if they really investigate and start getting DNA swipes. So who knows? And another thing that I thought was going to, come back is that when uh he was sitting there he like come on bakari like he used his government name loud as can be right there on the steps come on bakari the one that just dropped the dead body off on the front porch yeah you you sit in the front hey zay zay the one that just helped yeah you you sit in the back <laughs> like what this dude was too damn loud. Anyway, let me go ahead and get to the Moscow, y'all. All right, the Moscow, for most of y'all already know, is my rating system. I tried to make it as simple as possible, just four categories. 25 points each. Four quarters make a dollar. Let's do it. Visuals, cinematography. I'm going to give a little bit better than average this episode because they show with the Christmas stuff from different angles and the reaction with Duda. And I did not see that Duda was going to get rear-ended <laughs> by Nuck getting taken out, hit from the back. I thought she was actually going to finally pull that trigger. So... I'm going to give it a good, you know, they use modern cameras, all that. I'm going to give it a 23 in this category for this episode. Uh, Storyline and plot. To be honest, I hate that Duda is gone. Dang, man, I would have liked to see it a little better way, but I guess there's no good way. Uh, But it's a lot going on. Rob is gone. (laughs) Damn, Rob. Stretch Armstrong, they laid his big ass out. It took three of them to carry his big ass out and put him on the thing. They wrapped him in plastic. Anyway, I'm going to give this storyline for this episode a 23. You know, rest in peace, do die. Special effects makeup. Hey, they did have some good special effects when they popped his top. You know what I mean? He had a red dot on his head like a Hindu. You know what I mean? It was over for him. His head looking like a Pez dispenser. So I'm going to give him a special effect makeup. I'm going to give it a 23. And then last but not least, the entertaining, fun factor, enjoyability category. How much did you enjoy it? The feelings. And uh, I like this episode. It was good. I've already, you know, checked it out and... I'm ready to watch it again, so mm, I'm going to say that uh, hmm, this was probably one of the best shy episodes I've seen in a long time. Easy. One of the best I've seen in a long time. Uh, As a first reaction, I don't want to be prisoner of the moment and say it's the best shy episode, but uh, it was good for this type of show. I'm going to give it a... hmm, a 23 is again. They didn't, I didn't gave them all Jordans, <laughs> which came up to a 92 for this episode, which is very high for the shot. I give it a 92 on the Mosco. Y'all let me know what would you rate it. I always give a 0.5 margin of, you know, discretion. So if you think it's a 85 or a 95 or anywhere in between then those two rather i can see where you're coming from um 
Brandon Bates, you say it was good. Marquita D, it was good, but shocked Rob is gone. I am too. I wasn't see it. I didn't see that. I'm shocked for both of them. You know what? Also, with the cinematography, they kind of showed, which I'm not a big fan of, to be honest with you. But what they showed is that Duda was popped in the very beginning, and then it's like a who done it the rest of the episode waiting to see. I don't like that. But they gave us the the shocking part with Rob. But they they should have did it backwards. You know, maybe see some. Uh, I I don't know. Just don't do the who done it way. But it didn't hurt. But if it didn't do the beginning with showing us that he was already popped, and it just happened, that would have been so much better and so much shocking <laughs> to see. But we already knew who what happened, so we just waiting to see it now. Which, you know, I wasn't uh, a fan of. Marquita, you right, he ain't had to unalive Rob. He was just doing that to to prove a point. <laughs> hey, Lynn Whitfield is the truth. Shout out to H E A. You said that she killed her scene. I felt a heartbreak. Lynn Whitfield is the truth. I'm a huge fan of Lynn Whitfield. Still beautiful, very talented. And yeah, damn, man. It's a damn shame. I thought she was, whoo. She probably was thinking everything was good. Now the Duda is gone and out the way. And uh, which I'm wondering how did the Nuck meet up with him and see this is so fast when they was just together. Boy, they don't waste time in the shy. And that's one thing I noticed living in another city that I do live a kind of fast paced life trying to get stuff done. And it's, that's not normal everywhere. But I don't know if they could have did that much stuff that fast, but they do get a lot accomplished on this show in a short amount of time. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm about to get up out of here. Anybody watch the debate <laughs> with uh with Biden and Trump? It was the greatest debate, one of the greatest speeches ever spoken, one of the beautiful things that's ever happened in America. It was one of the most beautiful days. Beautiful, huge, huge crowd, huge crowd. My crowds were bigger than yours. No, no, it wasn't. I'm telling you, when I was there giving my speeches, it was knick knack, patty whack, give a dog a bone. See, see what I mean? He's talking about the bone. Knowing that he has dentures, wouldn't be able to chew a bone if he had to. My teeth, some of the best teeth any president has ever had. Beautiful teeth. I can play golf, hit the ball very hard, very far. Some say the furthest they've ever seen in person from a president. All right, I can hit my balls. I can hit my balls very far. See, see what I mean? He hits his balls, but he, we're talking about golf, buddy, not your testicles. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think that was just pure comedy on both sides. I I couldn't figure out which one to laugh at the most. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let me get up out of here. If y'all ain't seen it, check it out on HBO Max or YouTube or something. Because uh, it's hilarious. It's like uh, the Tom Brady roast or something. <laughs> he came walking up. <sighs> you ready? For the knick knack patty whack showdown. <laughs> Be get up out of here, y'all. Knowledge, you say what happened to Jackie Long? Jackie Long still around waiting on that paycheck. He waiting on that paycheck, giving him some time. H E A, you say this episode was the best episode of the two seasons. Yes, I didn't want them to eliminate Duda. Now his wife will take over. No. I know they're going to probably have a back, uh, bodyguard be the enforcer. I'm the new Duda. I'm called Dudette. 
Yeah, do that. What's up? Run me my money. <laughs> I'm up out of here, y'all. Y'all have a good weekend. I'm gonna go see DL Hughley tomorrow, uh, and uh, I'll be back Sunday, and we talk some more power and to week. Mix it up with a little other stuff. Hell, I might just do a who knows what kind of show. We'll see. Appreciate all y'all that's been coming through, riding with me, watching, whether it's live or on the replay. Uh, I've just been doing this for seven years. I think it was this month. It was seven-year mark, so, whoo, it's been a minute. Appreciate all y'all been on this journey for however long coming through. And uh, I'm going to see y'all on the next one. I hope everybody have a blessed day. And, uh, you know, have a good weekend. Be safe. Deuces.